It has just been revealed that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's financer husband purchased more than $2 million in Tesla stock last week in a regulatory filing released recently, marking one of the lawmakers' largest equity investments this year. According to a congressional disclosure document, Pelosi, a venture capitalist, recently purchased 2,500 shares of Tesla stock by exercising 25 call options with a $500 strike price. The call options had an expiration date of the next day. The acquisition comes as lawmakers debate whether or not members of Congress should be allowed to trade equities. Given her position as a House Speaker and her husband's extensive trading, Pelosi has been at the heart of the debate. So why is this an issue? How has Tesla stock been performing? Keep watching to find out. Paul Pelosi spent $2.9 million in January on stocks in Disney, Apple, American Express, and PayPal, among other corporations. The most recent disclosures were required under the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act of 2012, which requires legislators to reveal individual trades done by themselves, their spouses, or their children within 45 days of the transaction. The Tesla purchase was Pelosi's husband's latest large investment, according to the Washington Post, who had previously purchased all options in tech stocks such as Google, Salesforce, Roblox, and Disney. Tesla's shares have risen about 10% since Pelosi's purchase, including 8% on Tuesday alone, boosted by a larger market recovery on Tuesday. But the company is still down almost 19% from its all-time high reached in November. It's not the first time Pelosi has made a huge gamble on big tech stocks. He reportedly made $5 million last year on options contracts connected to Alphabet stock. According to the Post, the Pelosi's made up to $30 million from wagers on big tech companies throughout January. Insiders have accused the speaker of dragging her feet on measures that would put additional rules on the tech industry. A request for comment from Pelosi's office was not immediately returned. When the Washington Post asked her if her husband's financial trades were a conflict of interest, Pelosi's spokesperson, Drew Hamill, dismissed the question. According to Hamill, the speaker owns no equities. He explained, saying, As you can see from the obligatory reports, these transactions are labeled SP for spouse, with which the speaker completely cooperates. The speaker has no prior knowledge of such transactions or later engagement in them. Pelosi was initially opposed to a restriction on congressional stock trades, claiming in December that legislators should be permitted to engage in a free market economy. Following a barrage of criticism, Pelosi switched direction and said she'd be open to stronger stock trading regulations, including a potential ban. Several politicians have submitted legislation aimed at reining down congressional stock trading, with Senator John Ossoff, a fellow Democrat from Georgia, leading the charge. Members of Congress who obtain confidential information and develop policy that directly affects large publicly traded corporations, according to critics, should be prohibited from trading stocks. Pelosi was initially opposed to such a ban, but has now softened her stance and expressed interest in the policy suggestion. There are numerous reasons why members of parliament should be prohibited from trading individual stocks, according to ethics experts, but the matter was brought into sharp focus by the outbreak of COVID-19. After a series of probes into alleged insider trading by politicians, particularly in the early days of the COVID-19 outbreak, bills prohibiting members of Congress from trading stocks finally received bipartisan support, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. According to the voters, legislators should be prohibited from trading stocks while in Congress because their position allows them access to information about companies and industries that ordinary people do not have. This gives them an unfair advantage over the average investor. While some standards exist to at least provide clarity about how legislators profit from the stock market, there are no serious penalties for breaking those restrictions. As revealed by Business Insider's Dave Leventhal reported, the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act was broken by at least 55 members of Congress in 2021 alone. The Stock Act was passed in 2012 to prohibit the use of insider information to trade stocks, but many lawmakers now say it does not go far enough to prevent abuse. In early 2020, when many Americans lost their jobs as a result of the pandemic, U.S. Senators raked in millions after making lucky stock market trades. This annoyed a lot of citizens, as it should. According to lobby reports maintained by nonpartisan research firm Open Secrets, Tesla, which makes electric vehicles and solar panels, spends hundreds of thousands of dollars each year lobbying the federal government. Some believe Elon should be rather flattered by this controversy because it means Tesla is considered a top-tier stock worth breaking the law for. Just how is Tesla stock currently faring? 
Although it's unfair that Pelosi has this advantage, it makes sense that Tesla is amongst the top firms purchased. Tesla has had a spectacular year so far, with the launch of two plants and a superb earnings call. However, it's been a struggle for the stock. Since Pelosi's purchase, the stock has taken a dive to $800 once more, returning to its previous status earlier this year. The S&P 500 index fell 1.9%, while the Nasdaq fell 2%, and Tesla's stock didn't escape the selling. In fact, it's now down three days in a row, dropping another 3.8%, caught up in the broader sense of fear on Wall Street. Why are investors so agitated? Concerns about rising interest rates are one factor. The 10-year Treasury note yield recently reached 3.185%, its lowest level since 2018. In fact, the Federal Reserve is raising rates to battle inflation, but because higher interest rates make it more expensive to buy a car or a house, higher rates are inflationary from at least one perspective. They also reduce consumer spending motivation, potentially harming the economy and perhaps tipping into a recession. When these two anxieties, a stagnating economy and inflation, are combined, investors have a large, chimerical dread of stagflation. In addition to this general apprehension, Wall Street media provided Tesla investors with fresh concerns over the weekend. First, according to Barron's, GM is ratcheting up competitiveness in the electric car market by launching the GMC Hummer electric pickup and preparing to launch the Cadillac Lyric electric SUV. According to Reuters, Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dice has pledged to overtake Tesla as the world's largest seller of electric vehicles by 2025. Meanwhile, according to historical data from S&P Global Market Intelligence, Tesla has previously proven it can turn a profit in 2013 and then has put together a string of 11 consecutive profitable quarters from 2019 to 2022 to establish it can retain profitability. Today, Tesla has a 15.5% operating profit margin, which is twice that of GM and nearly twice that of Volkswagen. All indications are that, despite the competition, Tesla is doing just fine. Tesla's success has been built on the promise of autonomous, self-driving vehicles transforming the way people get around. While Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving suites have been relatively successful in recent years, Morgan Stanley analysts are skeptical that autonomous driving programs will continue to fuel the automaker's development and expansion. Instead, the financial institution is betting on Tesla's bread and butter, which is vehicle manufacturing and other competencies like material procurement, supply chain, and infrastructure development. It's no secret that Tesla's FSD and robotaxi ambitions have failed, despite Elon Musk's assurances that the company would complete its foray into fully autonomous vehicles in 2018. Each year, however, has come with a new set of obstacles, whether related to manufacturing or the supply of critical parts, delaying the distribution of a feature-full FSD suite or the anticipated robotaxi fleet. This has led to some doubts about whether Tesla would be able to maintain its incredible growth rate through one channel rather than another, which the firm has already demonstrated to be adept at manufacturing. According to a new note to investors from Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas and other analysts, Tesla's genuine path to further expansion and greater valuations is to focus on what it does best. Tesla has spent the last several years focusing on improving manufacturing efficiency and precision, which has resulted in a nine-quarter streak of growing vehicle deliveries. While that streak might be in peril due to the shutdown of Tesla's most productive facility in Shanghai, there is still evidence to suggest that the best route for Tesla to continue growing is through its manufacturing capabilities. When compared to nationwide accident data from the NHTSA, Tesla has made significant progress in its FSD program through the beta fleet, and Autopilot is coming off one of its safest years in history. But it remains to be seen whether Tesla will achieve full autonomy by the end of the year, as Musk predicts. Musk remains optimistic about Tesla's FSD development, saying earlier this year that he would be shocked if the firm failed to make significant advancements and finish the suite by the end of 2022. How do you think Tesla will perform this second quarter? Will they achieve FSD? Comment down below.